photographers that shoot commercially can expect to earn between $40,000, $150,000. This is the Cardi method. Undisputed king of profitability, number one, is commercial photography. Commercial photography is the one that if you can make a living, this is, this is the most profitable living in photography commercial photography. This is the art of selling. First of all, commercial photography is everywhere. It is how we know about the products that we want to buy. It is all about helping businesses succeed by creating images that communicate a brand's message. That can range from product photography, corporate headshots, advertising campaigns. The end goal is always the same drive sales for the brand's image. So how do you get into it? You start by understanding the business side of things. You have to think like a marketer as much as you're thinking like a photographer. You have to develop a portfolio that showcases your ability to enhance a product or a brand's appeal. That's super key. And also networking. You have to attend industry events connect with marketing agencies and establish relationships with local businesses. A strong online presence, particularly well curated portfolio and strong social media profiles can also really attract clients. So what is the estimated salary range? I'm a commercial photographer and photographers that shoot commercially can expect to earn between $40,000, $150,000. But the top tier professionals who work with major brands earn way more. Like I can tell you as a commercial photographer, $150,000 is on the low end. If you're doing it right, $150,000 is like on the low end. So that is the undisputed heavyweight champion of making money with your camera. And if you look at stevecotty.com, you will see, um, again, I'm an editorial photographer more than I will call myself, oops, a commercial photographer, but I shoot commercially. I shoot campaigns. I Most of my work is people-based. But if you look at some of my classics, you can see that this is what really drives my portfolio is all of the major faces that I've shot in this industry. Ludacris and Sandro and Pete Rock and Kanye West and Ja Rule and Fat Joe. So I'm an editorial photographer that shoots commercially. And if you look at what I did for comedian Eddie Griffin, not only did I shoot editorial photos, but this was a campaign to launch his comedy DVD, which is called Freedom of Speech. So you can see there's a commercial application to my editorial style of making photographs. Okay, so number two, and this is another incredibly lucrative way to make money. And that is wedding photography, wedding photography. Wedding, 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 wedding. Capturing those timeless moments. I promise you, people will always, always, always get married. What defines wedding photography? It's about capturing the magic of a couple's big day. From the intimate exchange of vows to the exuberant celebrations with family and friends. It's about creating a visual narrative of love and commitment. The emotional weight of these moments is what makes wedding photography such a rewarding yet demanding niche. So how do you get into it? To succeed, you have to start by building a robust portfolio. You might considering offering your services at a very discounted rate. My suggestion, free. Do a couple of free weddings. Do three free weddings. And that will help you get your foot in the door. When you shoot for free, you have the leverage. When you shoot for a gr drastically reduced rate, you're drastically reducing your perceived value. Like if you're shooting a wedding for $300, then that person says, 
I found a $300 wedding photographer. And then you start getting recommended as a wedding photographer that shoots for $300. So shooting for free, you can set the, the stage and the expectation that I'm doing this for free for my portfolio. It benefits you, but I'm doing it for free in exchange for the best testimonial you've ever written in your life. And then based on that testimonial, you can also ask that client, now that you've experienced this wedding, what would you pay for it? And she'd be like, oh my God, this was a $5,000 wedding. I would have paid $5,000 to have you here shoot video and stills of this wedding. So now that helps you establish your prices. So you don't shoot your first weddings for a reduced amount of money. You shoot them for free and you shoot them as if you're getting paid $5,000. Another way to do it is shadowing a seasoned wedding photographer. What that'll do is provide invaluable insights into the flow of the day and how to manage client expectations and also help you build relationships with wedding planners, with venues and other vendors. It's crucial. They're often the gatekeepers to more clients. Estimate yearly salary range, depending on your location, your experience, and the type of weddings you shoot. Wedding photographers can earn anywhere from $30,000 to well over $100,000 annually. High-end photographers, especially those who specialize in destination weddings, can go way, way, way beyond that range. So wedding photography is incredibly lucrative if you do it properly. Um, be a destination wedding photographer. I only do trips. If you're getting married somewhere else, I'm the photographer that you bring. That's that's big brain when it comes to wedding photography. You don't go in low, you go in high. Just to give you an example, there was a photographer that I wanted or tried to work for when I was like 18. And he was the best wedding photographer in Ontario, like in my city, Toronto, but like so big. And he was black and I was like, dude, amazing. This guy's gonna hire me right away. He looked and he was just like, you have no experience. I'm looking for a framer. Like he was looking for a framer and I went in just, I want a job. He's like, have you ever framed before? No. <laughs> it's like, dude. I asked him how much he charges for weddings. He says, oh, they start at 25,000. 25,000 and this was in 1988, just to like, wrap your head around it. 25,000 in 1988. So wedding photography. The next most profitable niche, this is number three, is portrait photography. Portrait photography is also what I do. Capturing the essence of individuals. What defines it? Portrait photography is more, just, more than just about taking a picture of somebody. It's about making a picture of somebody, capturing their personality, their essence, and presenting them in the best light, whether it's literally or figuratively. Whether you're using it for personal use or whether they're using it for personal branding, portraits are a staple in the photography world. Getting into it. And again, I am also a portrait photographer. And portraits, it's not how I started. I started as a fashion photographer. I started as a fashion photographer. That is how I wanted to be known. I wanted to be known as the next Helmut Newton. So I started as a fashion photographer, but currently I call myself a portrait photographer because I photograph the faces of today's generation. So how do you get into it? First of all, mastering lighting and posing is crucial in this niche. Your ability to make subjects feel comfortable and look their best will set you way apart. Start by practicing with friends, with family, and then expand your portfolio by offering sessions for free. Word of mouth is incredibly powerful in portrait photography, so encourage satisfied customers to give you a testimonial and to refer others. What you can expect to earn as a portrait photographer, portrait photographers earn between $30,000 and up. $70,000. I mean, depending on their client base and the frequency of bookings. Like for me, I, I my, that's just one of the things that I do and I niche stack. That estimated range is low if you do it the way that I do it because I'm a portrait photographer, but I shoot commercially, I shoot editorially, like I, I, I shoot headshot. Like there's so many different things that I stack under 
portraits. <laughs> it's like, you can really, really do it right, you know? All right, so number four is fashion photography. And fashion photography is another one of those niches. This is what got me into making photos is when I was 17 years old, I saw American Vogue for the first time. I had been shooting photos since I was 14. I started photography and, and um, taking photography um, as a class in high school. And I wasn't shooting for the yearbook. I was wanting, I was finding the cutest girls in school and running up to them and trying to set up photo shoots. So this is where art meets commerce. Fashion photography truly is the art of photography. And it's one of the most glamorous niches and often associated with high profile shoots, glossy magazines, runway shows. It's highly creative and it blends art and commercial appeal to highlight clothing and accessories. So how do you get into it? The fashion world is a fast paced world and it's incredibly competitive. To break in, you need a strong, cohesive portfolio that demonstrates your unique style. Collaborating on test shoots with models, makeup artists, stylists is how you do it. That's how you build your portfolio and how you get on the wheel. Going to fashion events, connecting with industry insiders, popping into modeling agencies and showing your work and asking them to free test is how I did it. Always stay updated on current trends. And by the way, anybody who I've helped or coached, I have the way for, for you to get into the door at a modeling agency. And it, it really is something that is doable. Um, I'm like, Look at me, I did it. And I did it also, I did it also like 33 years ago, 34. <laughs> you have to always be updated on current trends though, eh? As fashion is all about what's next. So what can you expect to earn yearly as a fashion photographer? Well, on the low end, 35,000. On the high end, 200,000 plus. Especially if you're working for top brands in major fashion hubs like New York, Paris, Milan, London, Toronto. Like, <laughs> Toronto is a photography hub and fashion is like Shalom Harlow, like some of the biggest, Coco Rocha. These are all Canadian models that come from here. Toronto is the birthplace of fashion for this country. So, um, I put Toronto on that list because the fashion photographers out of this marketplace are absolutely insane. So fashion, my suggestion, find a cute friend who literally should be a model that's 5'8", 2'5'11", that's slim. Scout these girls on the street and be like, this is what you say when you see a girl that you think is a model on the street, not ever. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. Don't ever say that. Don't ever say that. It's so lame. As a photographer, so lame. Because guess what? Obviously, okay? This is what you say. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Model, model, model girl. Model girl, model girl. And she's gonna do this. She's gonna turn her head. You say, what agency are you with? That's what you say. What agency are you with? Because guess what? She has an agency. She's gonna know that you're legit because you asked her what her agency was. If she doesn't have an agency, she's gonna be like, I don't have an agent. And you're gonna be like, you, come here. And then you share your contact information, you get theirs, and then you do a test. And then with that girl, you literally, now that girl, if she is legit like the next Kate Moss, now you have leverage. You have photos of her, and now you can start calling agencies and being like, hey, guess what? I have a girl for you. They're gonna be like, really? Be like, uh-huh, I guess I'm a photographer. I saw her on the street. I was just walking, I saw her on the street, and I did a test of her. And they'll be like, oh my God, please, please, please send us pictures. And I'll be like, I'll send you one, but we wanna meet you in person. And they'll be like, okay. So you send one and they're like, ah. And you're like, okay, so you meet both of us. Okay, when do you wanna come in? And now you come in and you're not representing her. You're just like, this is the girl I found for you. Enjoy. I wanna do this for you, for other people. Let me shoot some more people. Yeah, that's how you go in, not through the front door, not through the back door, but in through the kitchen.